Hey guys, James with Esprit Tech and we wanted to pop out a couple of little videos. We're going to do a series on these videos, just showing you the setup on our side anyway uh, for some of the more common fly barless systems. Today we are going to be working with the Icon 2, uh, courtesy of our friends over at HeliDirect. Uh, I want to thank those guys for sending this unit out for us to demonstrate for you. Uh, if you guys are in the market for a great fl fly barless controller, that is one of the places you can definitely go to source this product. So uh, check them out, that's HeliDirect. Uh, we're going to start out with the uh, PC side of this. Keep in mind this is an integrated device, uh, but we always do recommend you, know, you do your initial setup and startup uh, through the PC uh, and the, uh, the firmware for that. If you need the Icon software, you can get that by going to iconflybarless.com. Uh, I believe there's also a link on the product page at HeliDirect. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to do is get the unit plugged in. It'll give you the lights to let you know it's recognized. And then you can open the software. So when the software comes up, it's going to let you know that the condition that it's in. We did a factory default on this so that it is nice and fresh. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go through and do is we're going to skip some of the general instructions where you set up your motor types. That just helps you with your basic setup. Uh, in this general instructions page, you'll go through and you'll set up the model type, the blades, the tail blades, motor type, and so on. Uh, since we're just doing a bench top setup, we're not going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and go on to the second part of the wizard. Uh, this is where you set it up for what direction the unit is oriented in the machine. So uh, typically in most of the stuff that we would do with this device, we would do wires front or wires back, top up. So we're just going to go ahead and select top up wires front. In the next tab, which is the really important tab for us, we're going to go ahead and set this up for Jetty EX Bus. Uh, in today's demonstration, we're going to do two setups for you basically. We're going to show you how to do this on a standard EX receiver. That would be the R3, R5, R6 and so on. Uh, and then we're also going to show you the REX setup because there are a couple variations in the two. We want to make sure you have those. So we're going to set this up for EX bus. Uh, so we're going to click on the EX bus. It does take a second to take that input once you've clicked on it. Uh, you'll know that it has changed because it will go back to the beginning of the wizard. So uh, once we've done that, we'll go ahead and click on the page to verify. Uh, going to the next page, it actually gives you the connection setup. So if you'll notice here on the screen, uh, your Jetty receiver uh, would be wired to channel 3 on the FPL or on the fly barless controller. Uh, and it does show you how the rest of the unit would be typically wired if this was an electric or a nitro or gas machine. Uh, it shows you also where you would plug in your three swash and one tail servo uh, into the ports that are indicated on the fly barless controller. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and we'll click over to the next page and this is your transmitter setup page. Uh, currently if we were to wiggle the sticks on the transmitter we wouldn't have any input so now we need to go ahead and do the transmitter setup. Uh, I have set up the radio, the helicopter portion, uh, just like we did in the helicopter setup video. Uh, we went ahead and I'm going to jump into the menu and just give you an idea. Go to model, uh, go into function assignments and show you what we've done. Um, actually, let me back up a little bit just for the guys that didn't catch that video. Our basic properties are set up as a mechanical swash. That would be the same as single servo 90 degree, uh, which would coincide with the directions in the uh, fly barless controller. Uh, and we did not activate gyro 2, gyro 3 or the governor in this uh, hypothetical situation we're using the governor in the um, FBL so we're going to go ahead and escape we'll go into our function assignments uh, in function assignments you're going to go ahead and and use the basic setup that comes with the helicopter anything additional that you're going to want to set up um, you can do that as well by adding functions and adding controls to those functions if you were going to add tuning parameters uh, to adjust your gain on the fly, uh, your individual PIDs, anything like that, you would set up those channels here uh, so that you could use those later on. Uh, if you're going to use rescue, 
Then you're going to want to set a channel up for rescue or set a uh, function up for rescue and assign that to a channel. You would do that very simply on the transmitter by clicking the plus sign, uh, entering in the name, and then assigning it a control. Uh, we're not going to do that uh, for this example, uh, but that is how you would get that into the radio. The bigger part that we get the most questions on, I'm going to go ahead and escape out of that, is how to set the receiver up so that it will communicate with the FBL. Now that we've set the ICON2 up for uh, Jetty EX bus out or input, we need to make sure we do the same. So I'm going to go ahead and off screen, I'm going to plug in my receiver. Now I've already bound up a Jetty R3 RSW receiver. Uh, we're going to use that in this particular example. So once we get that in, you'll hear the transmitter beep, it says it's ready to go. Uh, we're going to go down into Device Explorer. Uh, let me go ahead and jump out for those that are fairly new. You're going to go Menu, Model, scroll all the way to the bottom to Device Explorer, and you're going to click on, you'll notice you can scroll that. We're going to go ahead and highlight R3 and click the center of the 3D wheel so that we can enter into that R3. Uh, here in this tab, you'll see that the serial link or output set up for serial communication is not set up. It's set up still for Jetty Box or Servo output. So we want to click on that. We want to scroll down and change that over to EX bus. Apply change is yes. So now we've changed the serial link or our serial protocol output to our EX bus. And we can go ahead and plug into the FlyBarless controller. Uh, when you set up on a standard EX receiver and using EX bus, it will come from port four on the R3 RSW. Uh, or the EXT port on the R3 R, uh, RSW, which is the same port. Uh, also, that will come from the EXT port on any of the EX receivers. Uh, in the instructions, it told us we're going to plug into port 3 or channel 3 on the fly wireless controller on the ICON2. And so now we've done that. So once you have that transmitter set up, you can go ahead and hit escape. Uh, you can verify that you have connectivity uh, in the software just by moving the sticks. And what you're going to want to do, according to the directions in the software, is you're going to want to adjust the endpoints in each of your outputs so that you reach 100% on this transmitter setup page. We're going to go ahead and do that by going into model, going into servo setup, and going through each of the outputs. So we're going to go ahead and set the aileron up first. That's your roll on the transmitter. Um, we're going to scroll down to our max positive input, highlight that, and we see that we're only getting 95 on our transmitter page. You'll also notice that my right stick is left input on the transmitter setup page. So what we want to do there uh, before you make any adjustments is go ahead and reverse that channel and make sure that the sticks are then moving in the right direction. So we are getting 96%, 97% right, uh, and 93% to the left. So we want to use the max positive, max negative, and make our adjustments there so that we can achieve the right values uh, in the transmitter setup tab. So scroll those through. Let's go, we are getting 98 there. Let's see, we are getting, there we go, 100%. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust the other side and we're gonna make that just over 100 in the transmitter, 104% gives us 100, let's see, 102 with our mixing. So we wanna back that down a little bit. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to make sure is that you are getting everything that you need make sure you're scrolling the right direction which i was not so that we get the right amount of information going to the transmitter so now we have at least 100 on either side uh, we can go ahead and go to our elevator and so we'll go ahead and push forward and pull back and you'll notice that that's also reversed. So we're going to do the same thing by going into the elevator servo setup, uh, reversing that servo 
so that we are getting exactly what we need for and back and make sure we're getting the right values. So we're going to need a little bit of output adjustment. We're going to have to widen that up just a little bit on either side so that we can get what we need to out of the system. So probably going to be about 102, 103 on either side in the transmitter and we're getting the correct numbers. So you're going to want to go through each of the channels and do this or each of your outputs and do this and make sure that you're matched up both in the directions as well as in the travel so that you're getting to the endpoints on the transmitter setup page. Uh, any of your um, accessories you're going to notice as well. So we noticed that our throttle channel is working because we are using constant curves. We're getting the correct outputs in those constant curves. Our pitch is operating in the full range as well. Uh, if you were to assign auto level rescue switch, that would be indicated here. Uh, we actually set up a mode so that you can use your, your different setups in the system. Um, and you can see that indicated in the current setup tab by flipping the switch for setup or what I called mode in the system. Um, the gyro sense menu has not been dialed in uh, for the transmitter but it is assigned a channel so you can see our tail gain is responding there you just need to achieve the correct values in order to get the heading lock setup that you're requiring for each of those so that's your basic setup now one of the nice things and why a lot of people are making the switch to these units uh, is in the transmitter so i want to give you an idea here or give you an example we're going to escape back out into the model menu and go back into Device Explorer. And you'll notice in Device Explorer, you do see the brain listed underneath the R3. Uh, if you click on that in Device Explorer, uh, it will bring that up and you'll see a full set of menus there. Uh, this is basically for all of the stuff that you're going to do to dial in that controller. Um, so you have the calibration, orientation there, the servos. Uh, there is a full menu. Your setup parameters, which are your PIDs, um, as well as any timers, the diagnostic, any of the presets. All of that is found in the uh, internal menu in Device Explorer, and it's really nice for dialing the machine in. So once you get it to this point and have gone through and done the required stuff on the software, uh, the rest of the setup or the rest of the dial-in can happen at the transmitter. Um, now I want to go ahead and jump out and show you one more thing real quick that's going to be important to a lot of you guys that are flying the REX receivers. So we're going to go ahead and escape out of the menu for the R3. Uh, we are going to power down our R3 and we're going to change models on the transmitter. So I'm going to go ahead and go menu, model, select. I've created a model as well for the R7REX and we have bound that transmitter if I'm correct or that receiver if I'm correct. Perfect. Okay, so we are bound to that. Um, we're going to do the same thing we did with the R3 for our setup, only this time we're going to go ahead and go into Device Explorer, log into the R7REX and instead of seeing a line uh, indicated as serial link the menu is different uh, in the rex receiver you will not use the ext port for your serial output uh, you'll need to go into alternative pin configuration uh, as you scroll down you will see e1 and e2 these are the convertible ports you're going to make a selection on which of those you want to use to output to the fly wireless controller uh, and you're just going to click on that line Find your EX bus, not the EX bus input or backup, but the EX bus. We're going to select that, and then we're going to go ahead and back out of that menu. Uh, now, if we were to plug in our controller uh, to the E1 port, which we configured as EX bus, go ahead and get that plugged in. Uh, you'll notice that we are now again outputting on to uh, or outputting EX bus to the icon 2. Uh, the brain will still appear uh, in the menu 
it'll still give you all of those tuning parameters because you are communicating in that EX bus protocol. It's just important to remember uh, that getting that EX bus output uh, not only is done differently in the setup, but it also comes from a different port. So again, this was the uh, Jetty setup side of your communication with the Icon 2 Fly Barless controller. Uh, if you have any questions on this or anything that we didn't cover, any suggestions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Esprit Tech. And uh, catch us again on the next time where we cover another one of the common Fly Barless controllers on the market. Thank you.